obstruction persists, the next step is to insert an oral airway or a nasal airway. An oral airway is a fairly firm curved piece of plastic which sits on top of the tongue and pulls it and the associated soft tissue forward, away from the top of the larynx. The correct size puts the flange outside the teeth and gum line and positions the tip near the vallecula. To estimate the correct size, place the oral airway next to the patient's jaw and judge where the tip will lie. Too short pushes the tongue back over the larynx, worsening airway obstruction. Too long extends outside the mouth and interferes with mask fit. While an awake patient often won't tolerate an oral airway, it's often a better choice than a nasal airway in unconscious children. The oral airway avoids the risk of bleeding caused when a nasal airway injures hypertrophied adenoids. Open the mouth as wide as you can and insert the oral airway. Slowly advance it until the tip is behind the back of the tongue. You can use a tongue depressor with your left hand to open the mouth and push the tongue down. Place the tongue depressor to the rear of the tongue and pull it forward. You can also invert the airway's curve towards the roof of the mouth. Advance it until the tip lies behind the tongue, then flip it into position. A correctly placed oral airway pulls the tongue forward and opens the mouth. If placed incorrectly, oral airways can increase airway obstruction by pushing the tongue back over the larynx. Oral airways have risks when used in conscious and semi-conscious patients. Risks include stimulating the gag reflex and causing vomiting and aspiration. Compression of lingual vessels and nerves can cause swelling. In addition, the tip of the tongue can get pinched between the oral airway and the lower teeth producing bleeding or edema. Use caution to avoid tooth damage or mucosal injury.